Issues related to the manufacture, distribution, and function of the final amount gases in Western Poland. Uh, the main subject of our study were field access associated with the funnel baker culture, global alpha culture, and coded work culture. For the research presented in this, in this paper, we combine raw material analysis with the morphometric, morphologic, microwave, and experimental methods. One of the uh, aims of our study is to determine distinctive feature of access produced from the local raw material. We carried out studies on the types of raw materials from which the field access were made. The obtained data was compared to sources from the local outputs and two important centers of the access production associated with the lithics from Southeast Poland and so-called Scandinavian field. Additionally, we made an attempt to identify the production methods and use of microlifts. This was supported by experimental and microscopic research based on these results. We created models of Schoenner Polatoire relating to the production and usage of usage of quick access made from different types of raw material. We interpreted the individual stages of Schoenner Polatoire from the choice of the raw material to manufacturing, using and repairing access up to the exclusion of the access from the cultural context. Additionally, we investigated the character of the distribution rules. Each craftsman manufactured the lithics access only near the prehistoric flint mines, and the goods were imported to the other territories, or they journeyed as specialists who distributed and repaired the flint access. As the results of the undertaken raw material studies, we can conclude that the detailed characterization of the individual access and chisels in terms of raw material is often problematic. In many cases, it cannot precise from what type of film the individual artifacts were made. If this was local or imported material from one of the so-called big production centers associated with the Cretaceous raw material like Bohemian film or Scandinavian film. In contrast with other tools or debitage products, which are non-Polish forms, the access and chisels were intensely processed by flaking and polishing. That is why these artifacts were ever, very often did not manifest evident features allowing the raw material identification. Usually, the only sure premise on base of which it was possible to distinguish the forms made from the local print varieties are the traces of the glacial transport. To summarize the results of our raw material studies, we can conclude that the almost of half of analyzed group of axes and chisels were made of the local erratic Baltic film. That is why we can complete the local production of the Neolithic square section pores in the region of Western Port. As a result of our comparative studies between axes made of local raw material and those manufactured in so-called big production centers, we complete a set of distinctive features of these artifacts manufactured from the local raw materials. On this slide, you can see some examples of uh, local axes and chisels. These tools are usually small due to the quality of erratic raw material. This kind of flint, usually of small size or internally strongly cracked, did not make it possible for the flint mapper to make a bigger tool. Next char characteristic feature of the local film production was the tendency to leave the part of natural surface on ready tools. This is associated with the tendency to achieve the largest size of the tool. Non-transport fragments were observed not only in the head of the part, what is also on tools from imported films, but also on bold, white, and narrow side of artifacts. Moreover, the majority of square section forms made from the erratic film were characterized by traces giving the evidence that the local field numbers were, were not very skillful. Uh, on this slide, you can see the example of <coughs> half, product, half product of axe. 
uh, which was made of local material. The microscopic photo indicates the type of tool made of antler, which was used to manufacture the axe. And the another example of the square section half product, product of axe made of the local material. Based on the microscopic analysis, we can say that the form to, the, to form this tool, the hammer stone was used. To sum up our knowledge of the local production, we can conclude that the most of the local kidnappers have not enough high, enough, uh, high competence level. We may assume that the craftsmen manufacturing these axes had a, some kind of theoretical knowledge, but there was a lack of practical experience at CTS. Additionally, the local craftsmen would not achieve the characteristic pattern of square section tool, which very likely was already established among community groups inhabiting the areas rich in good quality raw materials. Mm -hmm. However, it should be noticed that the local field workers did not limit themselves to make exclusively access of small and irregular size from local raw materials. Among the analyzed access, we distinguish also tools made from imported raw, raw materials and characterized by traces of repairs or reshaping, probably locally performed. Sometimes they were very skillfully executed, like the big one uh, on this slide. What may be associated with the high qualification of the local field numbers or craftsmen from beyond Western Poland. It is worth to consider the possibility of emergence of some kind of craft specialization of the, in the local community. As, we, as I mentioned earlier, among analyzed assemblage of flint axes derived from the Western Poland, we identified the large group of artifacts which are problematic to interpret. On this slide, you can see uh, the example of this type of tools. These artifacts were made of cretaceous raw material, but we cannot precise the raw material. It could be local or imported. These axes were, were very skillfully manufactured and quite large. We presume that this type of artifacts can be linked to one of so-called big production centers associated with uh, Cretaceous raw material like Goinian food or Scandinavian food. Mm -hmm. Also, on the level of the final shaping of the axis, we can see some similarities and differences between tools made of the local and imported raw materials. It can be stated that the greatest part of the analyzed axis was polished in two stages. At the beginning, the whole tool was polished, was this presented on photos B, and then certainly repeatedly on another kind of plate, some kind of sandstone, only the edge was polished, what is presented on photos A. The trajectory of the regular linear traces was also a distinctive rule for the access made of imported fins. The orientation to the left side of the edge may be considered as evidence for right-handedness of the manufacturers. These traces could be result of using more complex instruments during the grinding and polishing access. It should be added that usually main excess made of imported raw material are characterized by a greater number of grinding stages. On forms made of local flint, usually you can observe only two phases. Instead, the usual chaotic polish as well as short scratches we observe on access made of local raw material. It may suggest different types of grinding and polishing. Uh, these microscopic photos present this type of linear traces. Comparing the axis made of local raw material with other forms, we can observe a significant difference in how they were used. Small artifacts are characterized by numerous microscopic traces which we can associate with the user. These tools, due to the localization of microscopic deformation, can be mounted either longitudinally or transversely to the handle. A surface of plate is characterized by a occurrence of using traces, often associated with woodworking. Instead, the bigger forms made of good quality raw material very often are not covered with using traces. Of course, these traces could be destroyed during the process of preparing, polishing, or actually were used in a specific way but we can observe very clearly hacking traces. Mm -hmm. 
On this slide, you can see another example of small axe covered with the intense traces of using and hafti. Okay. And another two examples show two axes made of two different types of raw material. These tools are characterized by different traces of polishing and hafting. So we can presume that both of them were manufactured and used in two different ways. Mm -hmm. And in summary, we can conclude that there are some characteristic features of the local film production of square section forms occurring in Western Poland. First of all, the local square section forms are usually small, but is associated with the low quality of the erratic raw material. But there was a tendency to achieve the largest size of the tool, but is associated with tendency to leave the part of natural surface of ready tools. On the basis of macro and microscopic analysis of two types of flint axes, we can indicate some noticeable differences in the treatment of both groups of tools made of different types of raw material. We can conclude that axes made of local flint were grinding and polishing in not advanced way. They were very intensive used, whereas tools made of imported raw material present a more complicated biography, revealing a multi-stage related to repair and grinding processes. We can also suggest that individual access show various levels of competition of craftsmen, which may be associated with the transformation access by people from different regions. And in the end, we can add that analyzed access probably functioned for a long time in the prehistoric societies, as indicated by an intensity of microscopic traces associated with using and hacking. Thank you very much.